Ranking the coaching hires in college football for 2023 right here at the Voice of College Football. Please leave your comments below and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football. Hit that like button even if you don't agree with me. If you enjoy the best discussion, debate, and analysis, let's break them down. There are 10 new hires in the Power Five. Let's rank them. Number 10 is Troy Taylor of Stanford coming in from Sacramento State where he lit it up 30-8, and 23-1 and in conference play. Offensive coordinator at Utah before that, taking over for David Shaw, who's hit rough times at Stanford at 14 and 28 since 2018. Troy Taylor is known for having an innovative offense. The transfer portal is going to be a challenge for him. It's been difficult for the academic minded schools out there like Wake Forest, like Duke, Vandy, and Stanford in particular to acquire transfer portal additions. Our number 10 head coaching hire is Troy Taylor of Stanford. And keep in mind, we're not necessarily saying that any of these are bad coaching hires. Uh, We are just less sold on some of them than others for obvious reasons. And we go to number nine and we go to Purdue and Ryan Walters, the 37th head coach in the history of Purdue football, second year defensive coordinator at Illinois. And what a job he did for Brett Bielema and staff. They had the number one rated defense in college football, number five in most of the top metrics, led the nation in turnovers and in interceptions. And at six years at Missouri, Ryan Walters did a fine job, especially that 2019 Missouri defense finished top 20 in the nation, number three in the SEC, and top 10 in most defensive uh, pass defense metrics. Ryan Walters, our number nine head coaching hire at Purdue. Now let's go to number eight and a guy that's already uh, coached some games at Georgia Tech as he uh, took over for Jeff Collins at midseason and went four and four. Brent Key, nice uh, run there at Georgia Tech considering that in the previous 38 games, Georgia Tech had only won 10 and only 7 of 26 in the ACC. And he knocked off the likes of North Carolina and Pitt to go four and three in the ACC. He was at UCF from 2005 to 15 and uh, was the offensive line coach at Alabama during some of those vintage Alabama teams in 2016, 17, and 18. Brent Key is our eighth rated new hire as a head coach in college football for 2023. At number seven, we go to the youngest guy on the list, and that's Ken Dillingham of Arizona State. He becomes the 26th head coach in the history of Arizona State football, and he's only 32 years old. He's already had offensive coordinator stints at Memphis, Auburn, Florida State, and Oregon. And he did quite well at all those stops, especially at Auburn, where they really increased in recruiting and in offensive production with Ken Dillingham there. Ken Dillingham's our seventh-rated head coaching hire for the offseason of 2022-23. At number six, we go to a difficult situation, of course, at Mississippi State, where Mike Leach is sorely missed. One of the great offensive innovators in the history of college football has passed at the age of 61. Zach Arnett and Mississippi State honored Mike Leach with the first play uh, formation in the bowl game against Illinois. And now Zach Arnett is the head coach at Mississippi State. Takes over the 73rd defense in the country when he took on at Mississippi State in 2019. And uh, really mixed results in regards to what you would expect at Mississippi State. Uh, The defensive rankings under Arnett are 50th, 68th, and 35th this past season as the Bulldogs finished at 9-4. and Keep in mind, though, this is a good indicator. Zach Arnett was contacted by the likes of Texas, LSU, and Oregon for their defensive coordinator positions while at Mississippi State. He's off to a good start on the offensive side of the ball and replacing Mike Leach with Kevin Barbe, the offensive coordinator at App State, who's done such a fine job there. Our number six new hire head coach is Zach Arnett, Mississippi State. At number five, we go to Auburn and Hugh Freeze. And the only reason I... Boy, this is a difficult one for me to rate because I just kind of throw up my hands to say why. Hugh Freeze's accomplishments at Ole Miss are substantial, but they are severely tainted by his own personal conduct 
And by recruiting and academic violations that wiped out all those wins at Ole Miss. He did go 34-15 and 15 at Liberty. And again, the run at Ole Miss was impressive. 39-25, and 25, the record doesn't look that great, but got off to a slow start. Finished with a crash, but in between, a couple top 10 finishes for Ole Miss in 2014 and 15. Hugh Freeze needs to recruit at Auburn. They are expecting much out of him, and he needs to deliver. So it starts with recruiting. He's off to a slow start there. Our number five, new hire head coach, Hugh Freeze, Auburn. At number four, we go to Nebraska. And a job that Matt Rule reportedly turned down initially. And that's at Nebraska because he didn't think he could win a national championship there. Well, that's a a tall uh, mountain to climb, of course. But look at the program builder that he turned out to be a temple. Took over that program, went 2-10 and his first year. They ended up winning a conference championship for the first time since 1967. And he led the Owls to two American Conference Championships. Also at Baylor, of course, 1-11 the first season after the Art Bryles debacle. And within two seasons, the Baylor Bears are within an overtime of dethroning Oklahoma for the Big 12 championship. Matt Rule at Nebraska, he can coach, he can run a program, he knows what he's doing. Can he get the talent, enough talent to compete in the Big 10 at Nebraska? Well, they've got the NIL, they got the facilities, they got the backing. He's got to bring the players. Our number four, new head coach, Matt Rule, Nebraska. At number three, we go to Louisville and Jeff Brom, and what a job he did at Purdue. Consider, before Jeff Brom arrived at Purdue, the Boilers in the previous four seasons went 3-30 in the Big Ten, 9-39, and he lifted Purdue to that spoiler, that boiler spoiler alert program that they became that lived up to their legacy, defeating top five and 10 teams. He did it seven times while at Purdue. And after delivering that prolific offense in the passing game at Western Kentucky and going 30 and 10, 19 and five in conference play, he did the same, of course, with uh, most notably Aiden O'Connell at Purdue, delivering a Western Division championship his final season. 36 and 34 at Purdue with a one game better than 500 record in a Big Ten play, but so much better than 3-30. and 30. And now he goes to Louisville and his alma mater. He is going to be fired up, and he is going to be motivated to make Louisville a factor in the ACC. Our number three head coaching hire for 2023, Jeff Brom, Louisville. Now we go to the most controversial selection on the list, and that's out to Colorado. And one, Deion Sanders. So we know the pluses. Players love him. He's an icon in the sport as a player. He did a great job at Jackson State, at least on the surface, because they won football games 27-5 and at Jackson State. So what is not to like about this hire? Basically, he has yet to prove himself at the Power 5 level because he's never had that opportunity And one would have to question, to a certain extent, his ability to lead and build a program at this level. However, he's attracting transfer portal additions. He's attracting recruiting. And he's Deion Sanders. And so he's going to attract attention to a program that everybody has largely ignored for two or three decades. Deion Sanders at Colorado. Let's see what he does. Whether it's boom or it's bust, all eyes are going to be on Boulder, Colorado. And Deion Sanders, our number two head coaching hire for 2023. And at number one, it's a slam dunk. It is the best hire, everything taken into consideration. Yes, Dion could eclipse this, and he could be the big boom hire. But in terms of both safety and it being a home run hire, Luke Fickle at Wisconsin. Nobody expected this. Nobody saw this coming. Nobody knew of this going on. Luke Fickle has made it long known that he wants to stay in the Midwest, and most people believe that he either wanted to coach at Notre Dame or, of course, his beloved Ohio State. But he takes the Wisconsin job, and this is a tremendous hire. Look at what Luke Fickle did at Cincinnati. They went 4-8 and eight his first season, and he lifted them to a remarkable run to the college football playoff and were consistently the best program in the American Conference, the sixth-best conference, and also the best of the group of five. 
Luke Fickle is going to do a tremendous job, I have no doubt, at Wisconsin. That's our list of 10 head coaching hires for 2023, and we've got them ranked. Luke Fickle, number one. Deion Sanders at number two. Jeff Brom at three. Matt Rule at four. Our number five head coach, Hugh Freeze, followed by Zach Arnett. Ken Dillingham, Brent Key at Georgia Tech, Ryan Walters, and at number 10, not necessarily that it's a bad hire in any such way, just the least proven or the least hopeful or optimistic in my estimation. That would be number 10, Troy Taylor at Stanford. Your thoughts below on new hires for 2023. Who's going to succeed? Who's going to fail right here at the Voice of College Football?